Well, well. Nikki Valentine walks into my office for a change. What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So, you two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? Where do you want me to start? The part where Kellogg turned out to be working for the Institute? Or the part where he told me they have Sean? The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is. Or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, I knew he wasn't gonna go quietly the moment I saw him. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. <laughs> Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. I was so blinded by anger. I just wanted him dead. Now look what I've done. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. There's no way that could ever work. <clears throat> Stay with me on this. We get a piece of Kellogg's gray matter and take it to Amari. Then we see if she's got the goods to pull this off. Jesus, Nick. Bro, seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads, nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. If you want to head there together, just say so. I'll head out with Piper. We'll meet you there, Nick. Sounds good. You two stay out of trouble. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. And by the way, at some point, you owe me an interview. I want to hear how this whole story got started. Loud, full of corrupt officials and brown nosing citizens. Watch your back. But it's home. The Institute could be right behind you. If you're looking to keep your load light, I'll take a look. Sure. Self defense? Mm hmm.
Getting paranoid. Ain't nothing here. Hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. You better back off, or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. Well, well hey, all right. We'll just say your insurance is paid up for now, okay? Whoa, 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 time out. If someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said, let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new man. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Now, why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. Now I know you had old Finn handled back there. 
but a mayor's got to make a point sometimes. You all right? You. You're a ghoul? That's right. Like my face. I think it gives me a sexy King of the Zombies kind of look. Big hit with the ladies. Listen, a lot of walking rad freaks like me around here. So you might want to keep those kinds of questions on the low burner next time. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Of the people, for the people? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> I can tell I'm gonna like you already. Just consider this town your home away from home. So long as you remember who's in charge. Excuse me. A new player and good neighbor. Hello, little pawn. Welcome to our fun games. Brotherhood of Steel. Better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Not Irma. Excuse me. Good neighbors crazy. Thefts, murders, worse. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. The whole world's crazy. N -n no argument here. You ever listen to the Silver Shroud? Huh. That's what we need. No matter how bleak things got, he saved the day. What can you tell me about the Shroud? He's from the radio shows. I've listened to all 419 episodes, and the holiday special. He's the best. Better than Grognak and Man-to-Man -Man combined. My family and I used to listen to every new episode. You mean when they first aired? How? The last broadcast was hundreds of years ago. So, I'm a time traveler. I just got back from visiting George Washington. Now you're just playing with me. Though that would be pretty neat. You know what would be even neater? What if the Silver Shroud was real? With his black trench coat and gleaming silver submachine gun? I got a plan to bring him to life. So we can fight bad guys and give the rest of us a symbol of something better. Sure, Kent. You have a plan, all right. You really gotta rain on this guy's picnic. I know how it sounds. I've built my own custom machine gun. Even better than the one in the show. But to make this work... I still need the most important piece. The genuine Silver Shroud costume herself. And they actually got one here in Boston. They made it for the TV show. Will you help? I'll get the costume for you. You're gonna do this? For real? Before the bombs fell, they were filming the Silver Shroud pilot over at Hubris Comics. So that's where you'll find it. You're the best. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt himself, all right? Dr. Amari? Yes? 
I take it this isn't a social problem. We need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. I know it's asking for a miracle, Omari. But you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this. And so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model since. Is he compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Tell me you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. All five states have now signed on, which means that as of this moment, we are all citizens of the new California Republic. I'm sure that's going to take some getting used to for a lot of us. Mm, what a joke. What's it mean, Mom? 
Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days. Like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. To me, Connie, you take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I will let you down. You have always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah, you've got to give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. The thing about happiness is... you only know you had it... when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but, uh... you don't really believe it. Focus on that... petty bullshit, or next job or whatever it's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like no, I, i'm not saying this was a mistake i i'm just are you sure these guys know what they're doing i was the worst thing that ever happened to her if she'd never met me She'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. You seem kind of green. I know, but that's where I'd come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? I never deserved her. Not for one second. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us? And we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you 
weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect it. Sit down. Suit yourself. There was always a job for someone like me. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but... Uh, Dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. I just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's... I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. Try. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. Okay. That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. First synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. You still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. First synths weren't all that impressive. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed turned into a permanent arrangement, which suited me just fine. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you? There's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah, oh. oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. 
home computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Hopefully it's all just... I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh... I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of, uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh... I'm still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Find him. Pod C6, down the hall near the end. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Big heads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. This is the one. Here. Open it. <coughs> is it over? <coughs> Are we okay? Almost. Everything's gonna be fine. Come here. Come no, here. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. Even then, I knew it was. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on. Big heads never. All right, we're good. I'm. Uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory, so good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up.
Kellogg. It's okay. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Well, some heads are gonna roll for this. this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. X688, ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. This whole setup in Diamond City is part sense? of some elaborate plan of the old man's. The no Seems obvious now that we were bait we for our friend from the vault. As soon as you're ready. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied. side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Dr. Amari. Let's start over. Looks like someone was hiding her stash in this one. Amari. Let's start over. How are you feeling? Am I okay? Are you seeing anything... bad? Don't be alarmed, but I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory, but your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? We got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes. Their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? What do you think we should do? Um, let me think. What about that memory involving Virgil, the rogue Institute scientist? If he were alive, we have a common enemy. He might help us. I like it. The memory said the Institute tracked him to the glowing sea, but that seems crazy. A madman would think twice about going there. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway, you'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. 
Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rats. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Nick. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You feeling all right, Nick? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. Make something out of the Hey everyone, gather around. Let's kick the breeze back. Let me back. know if there's anything now, I know I can do are to doing let you know. Thing, but I don't want anyone no. here to forget what matters. Hey. Hey, you dropped Glad something. You Whoever this brotherhood of steel is, I'm not Did buying that. We come in peace the other day. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We're getting off track. What was I saying? Most oh, folks are just right. looking for a what hand. Matters. We oh, freaks we gotta, gotta stick together. Now, I the best way to stick stuff together stuff is to keep an eye out for what drives us apart. You feel me? Yeah, you tell it like it is, Hancock. Now, what out there in our big friendly commonwealth? want to drive us apart what kind of twisted hey. or neighborly oh, yeah. boogeyman would want to hurt our peaceful community the institute and their sins that's right who said that Come go check that out office later. Sure you've earned yourself some jet the institute they're the real enemy not the raiders not the super mutants not even those tools over in diamond city no hancock I'd sure love to give McDonough a kick in the ass. <laughs> hey, we all know I got my own personal beef with that lardhead. But stay focused. Now, I want everyone to keep the Institute in mind. When someone starts acting funny. When people are doing things they don't normally do. When family starts pushing you away for no reason. We all know who's behind that kind of shit. And the only way to stop it is to stick together. They can't control us. If we're not afraid. Now, who's scared of the Institute? Not us! us. And which town in the Commonwealth should the Institute not fuck with? The neighbor. neighbor! And who's in charge of good neighbor? Hancock! Hey. Hey. Of, of the people! For the people! Remain silent during the speech. <laughs> 